The following is transcribed. Welcome to Bat Soup, the never nutritious, definitely delicious podcast dedicated to the old time radio adventures of Superman and the dynamic duo. Buckle your utility belts for lots of seafaring peril, plenty of swashbuckling rescues, and ultimatums galore. Before we get to today's adventure, let's pause for this important message. Gang, it takes all kinds of people to bring you a swell treat like bat soup from the folks who take the time to put together the recipe to the hard workers in our factory who put that recipe into cans to the delivery drivers who selflessly face the border patrol multiple times every week, uh, not to mention the engineers who put together the swell prizes for you and heck, let's not forget the most important person of all. Your mom, for making sure your pantry shelves are stocked full of that never nutritious, definitely delicious treat that can't be beat, bat... Oh, uh, hello, Officer O'Flanagan. Have you seen Billy today? Uh, no, uh, not today. When I get my hands on him... Huh. Anyway, you need to make sure that you thank Mom for keeping you stocked up on bat soup and for making sure you're getting to have all the fun of collecting our swell prizes along with your friends. Yes, sir. Batman and Superman might be the big heroes of bat soup, but the actual hero is Mom. So be sure to give her a big hug and tell her thanks. And that goes double from all of us here at Bat Soup, available wherever fine podcasts are sold. Misdirection is still a direction. And now, Bat Soup presents today's adventure, part 12 of The Dead Voice, as originally broadcast on October 11th, 1946. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Kellogg's Pep! P-E-P Pep! Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman! Today, with Superman still unaware of their dangerous predicament, Batman and Robin put up a desperate but seemingly futile fight for their lives. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. You know, 49 sure is a lucky number, because 49's the number of different prizes you can collect from packages of Kellogg's Pet. Yes, sir, there's one in every single package. And all of them are slick. For instance, uh, you can get seven different colored cardboard models of fighting planes. Easy and, and fun to assemble. And then there's a great new series of 24 bird pictures, each with a full description on the reverse side so that you can wow the gang with your knowledge of birds. And there are 18 bright colored comic buttons, each with a famous comic strip character to, to pin on your beanie cap or your jacket. Now, that makes 49 different prizes you can collect. And that's only a part of the fun in Kellogg's Pet. Think of the good eating fun in those crisp whole wheat flakes, all crammed with keen, catchy flavor. I mean, that wonderful golden toasted flavor, that sunny, strictly pep flavor is famous. Why, pep is called the sunshine cereal. Yes, sir, when it comes to brightening up breakfast, pep's a terrific hit. So get in on the fun, gang. Ask Mom to bring Kellogg's Pep from the grocer tomorrow, and be sure to look for your prize inside the package. Now, the adventures of Superman. Trapped on his grandfather's yacht far out at sea, Dick Grayson, who was really Batman's young companion, Robin, was about to be dispatched by Paul Marsh, his grandfather's secretary, when the swift and powerful bat boat was seen approaching. Under orders from Marsh, the crew of the yacht opened fire with machine guns. Recognizing the need for help, Batman told Alfred, his loyal butler, to race the bat boat back to Metropolis and contact Clark Kent. Then, when Alfred made a sharp U-turn, Batman dove into the dark ocean and swam underwater toward the yacht. As we continue now on the moonlit deck of the ship, two burly sailors hold Dick's arms pinioned as Captain Skinner reports to Marsh. Listen. 
Everything is under control, Marsh. We put several holes in the bloody boat. She won't get far. Besides... There's a radio telephone on the boat. That me- uh, The men in the boat will call the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard? I, I think that... Stop listening to this young puppy. Relax, Marsh. The two blighters who were in that boat won't call anybody. We plugged both of them. What? Are you sure? I'm jolly well sure. As a matter of fact, one of them fell overboard. Done for. Uh Uh-oh. I saw the other one pitch over the wheel as he swung about. Oh, no. I held my bimaxual on the blighter until I saw him slide to the deck. Why, there? He's through. And his blinking boat is heading straight for the boss. Splendid, Captain. Splendid. Why, you dirty... Hold it, Wilson. Wilson. Tell you. Let go He'll of He'll let go in a moment, Dick, as soon as I put a bullet into you. Get it over with, Marsh. Then we'll take care of his grandfather. Captain Skinner, sir, look there. Coming over the stern rail. By Joe, who's that? It's Batman. It's Batman. It's over here. here. Come in, Dick. Start dishing it off. Oh, brother, and how? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Step right up and get it. Put this in your bread basket, oh. Captain. Oh, next. I'm sure you're tired of standing, Mr. Marsh, so no, let don't, me help you sit down. Nice going, Dick. Pardon me, sailor boy, but your chin is showing. Oh, you 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 Look up ahead, that man toward the bow. Oh, the gang from below ship, and they've got guns. Shoot them, men! They shoot the kill! I hate being a clay pigeon. Quick, Robin, I see an open hatchway. Make like a mouse. Here I come, down the hatch. Shoot them! Come on, Sean, up on your feet. All there? I think so, Batman. Good, let's make tracks. And I know where. Follow me. Lead on, McDuff. Hey, what are you stopping for, little fellow? Oh, sorry, I forgot to hold out my hand. Into this stateroom, quick. Okay, any old port in the store? Good thing there's a lock on the door. Well, that won't keep our friends out long. No, but... Fix, is that you? Hey, you've got company. Yes, it's my grandpa, oh, Batman. Thank heavens you're alive, You're son. your what? My grandfather, Mr. Grayson. Fine, trying to make gag. It's no gag. Grandpa, this is Batman, my pal. Open the door! Godfrey, what is this all Sorry, of... Mr. Marsh, but we're hard of hearing. Come on! All right, George, we'll blast you out. Blast away! But don't forget the duck when you come in. You haven't got a song. You might as well open the door before we break it. Out. Don't you dare, Marsh, you bounder. I warn you, I have a pistol here. I'll blow your blooming head off. Oh, why, Grandpop, what big teeth you have. That's the spirit, Mr. Grayson. I'll teach those rascals. Try to kill my grandson, will they? Try to poison me, eh? Listen... Seems as if all's quiet on the western front. Do you suppose Grandpa's pistol scared them away? No, not for long. You can be sure of that. They're probably plotting some new dirty work. While we're still around the fireside, Sonny Boy, suppose you bring me up to date. How did you get on this pirate ship, and what's with this Grandpa and Grandson? Well, you see, Mr. Uh, 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 just call me Batman, sir. I'll tell him, Grandpa. Uh, very well. I can make it short and sweet. It's on the level, Batman. This wonderful fire-eating old gentleman with the walrus mustache is my long-lost and ever-loving grandfather. Why, incredible. Well, that's quite correct, sir. I can't believe it. John Grayson's father? Correct. You see, he disowned my father because he scorned the old family estate and grandpop's boom and millions, so to speak, and hooked up with a circus. That's yeah, because I was a hard-headed old fool. And now... But lately, he got softened up by old age, I ah, suppose. Now, look here, you young scallywag. <laughs> Easy, grandpop. He wanted to cast his fond eyes on me, see? So he toddled across the sea in his yacht and told his secretary, Mr. Paul Ratface Marsh... Marsh? His secretary? Uh-huh. Grandpop told him to find me. But Mr. Ratface, knowing he would inherit Grandpop's fondulix if I were out of the picture, decided to chisel me out for keeps. Oh, I get it. So, knowing everything having to do with the Graysons, he got Eric Larson out of the cooler, planning to let Larson finish me. And then he figured to finish Larson, as he did, by the way. Yes, I know about that. And tell the police he shot Larson while trying to save me. Well, a very neat plan. And how. But the rest of it includes a plot to poison Grandpop, which he was all set to do tonight. Then dump him overboard and shoot back to England and collect your inheritance, right? Check and double check. He's a filthy scoundrel. I trusted him with everything. All the time he was planning to murder me and, and Dick. Yes, a very sweet character. Well, we almost fixed his clock, but now... Relax. Maybe we'll fix it yet. Ah, oh, stop kidding and let's face it. Marsh and Captain Skinner and company have us hold up here. They're not going to clap themselves in irons and bring us the key, you know. Uh, Dick's right, uh, Mr. Uh, Batman. Uh, we haven't a chance. We have if Alfred gets back to Metropolis in the bat boat. I told him to get in touch with Clark Kent. And Kent is, uh, uh, well, he may be able to contact Superman. Did uh, you say Superman? That's right. Uh, take a deep breath, Batman. This is going to hurt. Well? Alfred is done for it. Why do you say that? Captain Skinner told Marsh he shot Alfred and shot the bat boat full of holes, too. He what? So, well, I guess that's all for poor old Alfred. Poor old Alfred. He was pretty swell. Yeah, you said it. 
Well, what do we do now, Pappy? I don't know. We've got to figure something. Uh, who, who is or was this Alfred person? A swell guy. And a good friend. Listen in there! Uh-oh. Our little playmates are back. Yes. What is it? We'll give you a guess. Three minutes to open the storm. Come out with your hands up. Don't make us laugh, rat face. Right. If you want us, come in and get us. Listen to me, you fool. There's no way you can escape. Either open the door and surrender, or you'll set fire to the ship, abandon it, and let the three of you go to death. Why, you scoundrel, you wouldn't dare. Oh, no. You try us and see. You have three minutes to make up your mind. Either come out. Or go down with a flaming shirt. Fully realizing their danger, Batman and Robin and old Mr. Grayson hear Paul Marsh's ultimatum. What will they do? What can they do? We'll know in a moment when we return for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, in order to be hep these crisp, cool autumn days, you have to feel hep. Sure, wide awake and alive. And you can't feel that way if you don't eat right. So, gang, give breakfast a chance to show you what it can do to help begin your day. Start right off with Kellogg's Pep. There's a treat that is a treat. Those golden flakes of pep are so crisp and, and keen and catchy tasting that, well, they practically say, Hi there, want a spoon? So you dig right in and get that lively golden toasted flavor. And is it super? Is it terrific? And the same goes for the swell bonus you get in every pet package. Meaning, of course, those keen prizes. All three kinds. For instance, you'll get either a colored cardboard model of a, of a famous fighting plane, one of seven in the great pep air fleet, or uh, you'll get one of 24 beautiful color pictures of birds with a full description on the reverse side to, to help you identify these birds anywhere. Or else you'll find a bright colored comic button picturing one of 18 characters straight out of the funnies to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. So start collecting all three kinds of pep prizes, gang. Ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. While Batman and Robin appear hopelessly trapped on Mr. Grayson's yacht, Clark Kent and Beanie Martin, Daily Planet copy boy, have arrived at the handsome house where Batman and Robin live as Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson. That's odd. No answer to the bell. I guess there's nobody here, Mr. Kent. Yeah, so I see. Well, this is a tough break, Beanie. I was hoping Alfred the butler would be able to tell us where... Ba uh, that is, where Bruce Wayne went. You say Mr. Wayne called you by radio telephone? Yes, uh, through the Marine Telephone Exchange. That means he's someplace on the water, but where? Yeah, that's just it. There's a lot of water around Metropolis. A huge ocean and two big rivers. Look, why didn't he give you his location, Wayne? Well, oh, I thought I told you. Something happened to his radio phone just after we were connected. Oh. Now, all I know is that he and Dick need me. And I'm worried, Beanie. Plenty worried. You and me both, but what are we going to do? I don't know, except... Wait a minute. Come with me. Where? Downstairs in the basement of Wayne's house. I just noticed something very interesting there. <laughs> Mr. Wayne had a setup like this under his house. Look at this. A garage, an airplane hangar, and even a boat slip. Uh-huh. Gee, I'll bet it's nice to be rich. Hey, wait, Mr. Kent. How can there be a place for boats here? This house isn't built in the water. That's right. But there's an underground canal which empties into the river a short distance away, and I suppose it... Uh-oh. Hold it, Beanie. What is it? The bat boat is gone. A what? Bruce's speedboat. The... Uh... That means he must have been in it when he called me. Uh, wait here, Beanie. Yes, what was it? Are you jumping in the water for, Mr. Kent? I saw something. There. I got it. Wait, do you realize you've got your clothes on? Uh-huh. But I had to get this note. No? What note? I'll show you. As soon as I get out of the water. There. Now, oh, let's see here. What is it? Well, the water blurred most of the writing. But I can make out Dick's signature. You can? Where? I can't see anything but what paper. Wait, Beanie, wait, wait. I think I can make some of this out. Well, how can you? There's just a lot of blur. Wait a minute, mind. will you? Hold everything. Now, let's see. This says Cove Harbor. Cove Harbor? Uh-huh. That's just a few miles down the coast. Yeah, I know, I know. Those are the only words I can make out, though. Except Dick's name. But it might be enough, I hope. 
All right, come on, Beanie. Let's get out of here. I've got a job to do. A job big enough for Superman. His eyes gleaming, Clark Kent prepares to follow the clue to Batman and Robin. Will he, as Superman, pick up the trail of the bat boat from Cove Harbor and find the Grayson yacht in time to save his friend? At this moment, far out at sea, Batman, Robin, and Robin's grandfather have been given an ultimatum. Surrender and be shot, or be abandoned in a burning yacht. What will happen? Don't miss Monday's thrilling episode, fellows and girls. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, who's in the know about kids in other countries, how they look and how they dress? Well, Kellogg has the answer with the cutouts on packages of Kellogg's Crumbles. Boy, will the kids in your family have a load of fun with these dolls of all nations cutting them out and changing their costumes and collecting all six countries in the series, like Switzerland and, and Russia, Sweden. Two cutout dolls on every package in full color. That's dolls of all nations on packages of Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. That was part 12 of The Dead Voice from The Adventures of Superman. Thank you for listening. Never miss an episode of Bat Soup by subscribing on your favorite podcatcher. Bat Soup is a proud member of the Moonlight Audio Theater family of podcasts. We're also available on YouTube and Facebook. Learn more at bat-supe.podbean.com. That'll wrap things up for this episode of Bat Soup. But be sure to tune in next time when you'll hear Batman say... We seem to be literally between the devil and the deep blue sea. For almost two centuries, Americans have enjoyed the valuable privileges of freedom. Now, freedom needs each American to dedicate himself to its preservation. We must not allow our liberties to be endangered by neglect of our duties as citizens. During this year of rededication... Join with your fellow Americans in reaffirming the principles on which this country is founded and the safeguarding of those principles. Make it your business to see that federal, state, and local governments are conducted honestly. Help to maintain the good morale of your sons and daughters in the armed forces. Learn the facts about all candidates and issues. Then vote for the one you believe in. Make the most of every minute on your job. Produce as much as you can and thus increase our military and economic strength. Work for better schools and a better community. Guard your American heritage of freedom. It needs you.